Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here for Assimilate Inc. and I'm back again with another Scratch tutorial and in this lesson we're talking syncing audio. Now in the ideal world all of your audio will have time code that will easily match your video but as we all know none of us live in an ideal world so in this lesson I want to talk about that technique again that we talked about in a previous lesson and what I want to do is add upon it by showing you what to do if even if you have matching time code your audio is still out of sync we'll make that adjustment to get everything back in order and then i'm going to show you how we can sync wild audio to clips that you have in your timeline all right so as you can see we are in assimilate scratch and we have some clips lined up here for us to work with of course they are our cowboy footage plus an additional clip that you can see right down there at the end in the last slot now the reason that I've brought in this additional clip is because I, you know, and you always hear me say this, Scratch is such a visual program. You can tell a lot about what's going on with clips by simply looking at the information that's presented to us. And right away I know that some of these clips have embedded audio and another one doesn't. Now how do I know this besides the fact that I was the one that brought the footage in? Well, I'll tell you. If you take a look at each one of the thumbnails in the slots, you'll notice that the first four have a little speaker icon at the top. However, the last one does not. So if I was to come to the edit module and take a look, you'll see here comes the audio for all of our clips. Now keep in mind, this is embedded audio that's associated with the clip and you'll notice that our last clip down here gets nothing. There's no audio with that clip. So again, this is how you can be very visual inside of Scratch and tell exactly what's going on by simply taking a quick look at the clip. Now. Couple other ways that we can figure out if there's audio, as you just saw, I can jump to the edit module, check out the audio waveforms, and what you can even do is come in and make sure that the speaker is turned on. I'm just going to jump back here to the first clip and hit play. And you'll hear we got some very scratchy audio there. Not what we want. Okay? So this is why we're going to get in and we're going to add audio. Now, remember, keep in mind, when they're shooting on location, assuming they have, you know, external audio guys, you know, doing live sound, they're going to be relying on that audio as their master audio, whether they're going to be recording it to files, whether they're going to be recording it onto the camera. This is why it's important to know exactly the assets you're going to be getting when they are delivered to you. Now, let's talk about syncing up the way that we had sunk things up in a previous lesson. I'm going to head back to the construct module. I'm just going to delete this clip because I don't need it anymore. And I'm going to head into the media browser. Now, you'll remember this from the previous lesson. I'm simply going to select our four clips. I'm going to make sure that everything's left on its defaults. We're going to make sure import scene slash take is turned on. I'm going to say find audio. Let's head to our footage folder into scratch dailies, into our audio sync and into audio. Select. Everything's sunk up. We're good to go. I can say, OK, we can come back to the construct module. And if you now take a look at each one of the thumbnails in the slots that we have available, that gray speaker is no longer gray anymore. It's now yellow or a yellowy orange color signifying that there is audio attached to each one of these clips. Now I can pretty much walk away and assume that everything is fine and everything went to plan. With that being said, I don't always trust timecode. As much as it should be locked dead on, in some cases it's just not. Now if we head back to the edit module, the first thing you're going to notice is the fact that with the metadata information that was brought in for these clips, you'll now see that I have some information attached to them like mono, mono, Julie, Chato, Vince, and Boom. So I know exactly what's going on with my audio channels again by just simply looking at them. If I hit play. Should I be starting? Yeah. Okay, very nice. And everything is now sunk up, or at least I hope yeah. it is. So let's find out if it really is sunk up. And I'm just going to use the first clip as the example, and then you can take that and obviously expand on it from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to where the clapboard is. There's the clapboard right there. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to zoom in. Don't want to zoom in on my timeline. What I want to do is hold Option or Alt. I'm going to click on the viewer. We're just going to zoom right into our assistant here that's going to be using the clapboard. Let's just hit play. Take one convert. Now that looks like it's not in sync to me. It looks like it hits and then I hear the actual clap sound. Take a look again. Take one convert. Okay, this is actually good. This is going to let us do a manual sync on our own. Now, we're going to need to get in and slip audio. And if you take a look right here, we do have a slip parameter that we can adjust. But by me getting in and doing this manually like that, it's not really going to help me. 
160 take one common mark. You can see, you could be playing around with this forever. I was actually way off there. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to put that back to zero because there's a more precise way that we can get in and do this inside of Scratch. I'm going to call up our audio parameters here. I'm just going to put them over here for now, which I think is good enough for checking to make sure that we are in sync. Now, I'm actually kind of glad that the output module showed up first because you'll notice that in the output module, we have the ability to turn audio scrubbing on right here. Now, we also have the ability to take a look at the mixer. Okay, don't have much audio happening here, but if I was to jump down. Okay, there we go. We can see the audio happening. Perfect. All right. But for what we want to do, I want to get in and I want to check out the audio waveform. Now, you'll notice here that I actually have a little parameter called slip. And the slip is going to let me actually get in and make the adjustment very precisely, in this case, in milliseconds, as to the adjustment we're going to make to slip this back or forth. Now, I also want to point out that if you head back to the output option, you'll notice that you can show slip in milliseconds or in frames. Because I can deal in milliseconds, that's how we're going to deal with this. So let's head back to waveform. I'm just going to hit play here, and I want you to watch what happens with the waveform. Okay, so you'll see now, if I come back, there's the actual clap right there. Okay, so let's come back. And what we want to do is we want to sync this up. Now let's just figure out where the actual clap happens, which is right there. Perfect. Now you'll see again, clap's not even in place. So all I have to do is actually click anywhere inside of the waveform window and just start dragging. Now you'll notice that as I start dragging, I'm just going to undo that for a second. If you take a look at the slip here and even down here, you'll notice that it starts to move. And I can actually bring this right back to where that clap happens. Now you'll notice we're not dealing in frames here. We're actually dealing in samples. So I don't have to worry about the actual sound of the clap starting here here, here, here. I can actually adjust it precisely where we need it to go, which is right about there. So now if I come back a little bit and play this, take a look at what's going to happen when that clapper hits down. Do you take one common mark? Perfect. That's perfectly in sync now. All right. So let me now show you another example of what's going to happen if you get audio that I call wild audio, meaning there was no audio that's being, you know, no time code that's being recorded on the set for you to quickly get in and sync things up the way that I just showed you. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the audio from these clips. Now, keep in mind, I want to say in an ideal world, you shouldn't have to do what I just did. But to be honest, it's much like, you know, I always jokingly say that, you know, when you're editing, every shot needs color correction, whether you think it does or not. In this case, every shot is going to require that you double check the audio sync, whether you think it's in sync or not, because even being off by a frame or two can become very noticeable. What I'm going to do is just head back to the construct module, back to the media browser, select everything. I'm just going to clear all the audio from there and I'm going to say OK. Now, there's a couple ways that we can add audio to a clip. I'm just going to head back to the edit module for one second here. You'll hear our static just came back here and that's fine because we're going to get rid of that in just a second. Now you're going to notice that we have something over here that says embedded audio and something over here that says timeline. We have a couple ways that we can add audio to our, I'll say in this case, to our timeline. I can attach it to the clip. I can attach it to the timeline. For the purposes of what we're doing, I want to add it to the clip. So let's just use the first clip again as our example. So with the first clip selected, I'm simply going to say add. Now I'm going to be asked, where is this audio clip that I want to bring in and attach to my clip? So I'm going to head to my, re it's not to my recent path, it's actually to my bookmarks, to my desktop, and I have a folder called Wild Audio. Now in this case, I actually have the audio matching the name of the clip. So I believe this is C001, which is right here, C001. And I'm going to say open, all right? Now again, if I hit play. I should probably start on the apple, should I? Yeah, her lips should aren't I even moving starting? there. Yeah. Okay, now I probably should jump right back to the beginning here. One sixty, take one, common mark. There's the clap. Now take a look. The clap hasn't even happened yet. Now, you might be thinking, well, Kev, you could probably just use the technique that you just used, and for the most part, I probably could do that. But to be honest, I'm not going to do that because that's just a very, very long way of doing things. So let me come back here. Make sure I'm actually at the beginning here. Hold on. Let's come all the way back to the beginning. One sixty, take one, common mark. Okay, there we go. Now we know we're almost there. I'm just going to go through frame by frame and there is my clapboard right there. 
All right. Now, it's important to keep in mind when I'm stepping through, I'm not stepping through by sample, I'm stepping through by frame. And you can see, because I'm actually jumping to each one of these dotted lines, which represents a frame. All right. So I'm going to come right there to where the clapboard sound is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to set a marker right there. Now, by doing that, we've tagged the audio as being the point that we want to make the sync for, or the, basically our sync adjustment is going to happen right here with the audio. What I'm now going to do is just with our videos, I'm just going to hit play. I'm going to find the frame right there where that clapboard hits down, which is right there. And all I'm going to do is simply now say sync. As soon as I do that, the audio is going to be pushed down from where that point, the sync mark that I made earlier, and now take a look at what we've basically just done. 160 take one common mark. Perfect. Our audio is now perfectly in sync. We're now ready to take this clip. We're, to be honest, we're now ready to do the same technique to, to the four clips, to the 40 clips, to the 400 clips that we have in our timeline. It's really dependent on how the audio was recorded in the field. All right, so this is really just a primer lesson in audio, specifically for syncing audio, especially if you're working in a dailies workflow, so that you're going to be able to get in and get all of your good audio sunk up as quickly, as efficiently, and as accurately as possible. All right, I want to thank you for watching this great lesson on learning Assimilate Scratch. Now, don't forget to check us out on our different social channels, and if you missed our last lesson, you can simply click on it right here on the screen in front of you. Don't forget as well to hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, you can always send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com.